Welcome everyone, my name is Erika Vörös and I'm a PhD student at Ötvös Lorend University in Hungary. I would like to thank Frogbear Project, Harvard Chinese Art Media Lab and Glorison Global Network for organizing this event. My topic for today is searching for a Bodhisattva land on Earth or Potalaka face in East Asia. In this presentation, I will try to compare the most famous Avalokiteshvara Bodhimandas in China, Korea and Japan from two different aspects. One of them is the philosophical background based on the different Buddhist schools these places were associated with. The other one is the influence of indigenous religions, which might be accountable for the diverse nature of Potalaka beliefs. Potalaka, the worldly abode of the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara, appears in several Buddhist scriptures. The most well-known among these is the last chapter of the Flower Ornament scripture, also known as the Gandaviva Sutra, along with Suenzang's record from the regions west of the Great Tang. Since the scriptures describe Potalaka as a mountain on the sea, or as a mountain connected to the sea by a river, all the three sacred, sacred sites examined in this presentation are located at mountainous areas near the sea, where indigenous mountain worship and maritime religion influence the narratives and beliefs about them. Although there are several theories concerning the original location of the mountain, the fact that Portalaka was identified in many geographical places around the world implies a symbolic meaning. This might not be unrelated to Mahayana philosophy, according to which the realm of the Buddhas and the realm of sentient beings are not separated from each other, but samsara is none other than the world of enlightenment, which is also emphasized in the flower ornament scripture. The first sacred site I would like to talk about is Mount Puto in China, which is one of the islands of the Joshan archipelago in Zhejiang province. Here are a few pictures of the site. The oldest temple on the island, Pukenchi Kuan in Yuan, is thought to be founded in the 9th century by the Japanese monk Egaku, assisted by Shilla merchants. The later emergence of Mount Puto as an international pilgrimage site is not unrelated to the fact that it lies on an important sea route between China, Korea and Japan. Saving those facing danger on sea was already one of Avalokiteshvara's roles in the Lotus Sutra, but for those navigating near Manputo, maritime safety might have been of special importance, so the Bodhisattva's role as a sea deity became emphasized. Nanhai Kuanyin, or Kuanyin of the Southern Seas, worshipped on Manputo, is one of the several iconography forms indigenous to China depicted in female form. A boy and a girl accompany her, who are identified as Sudana from the Gandaviva and the daughter of the Dragon King, from whom the Bodhisattva receives the jewel in esoteric sutras. The Bodhisattva is sometimes depicted standing on the top of face, a giant, of, giant fish or a dragon. The dragon motif in the iconography of the Nanhai Kuan Yin might be connected to the presence of dragon face in the region, since the dragon king of the East Sea was a popular deity on the Joshan archipelago, the image of which merged with Buddhist ideas about the Dharma protecting Nagas. It is noteworthy that in all the texts about the founding of Pukenji Kuan Yin Yuan, the miraculous responses of the Bodhisattva are emphasized. The basis of this idea can be traced back to the Chinese concept of Kanying, according to which human, heaven and earth are interconnected, can mutually influ influence each other, and heaven can respond to human acts by natural phenomena. This belief found its way into the thought system of Buddhism as well, since the, since the mutually interdependent vision of reality in Buddhism resonated well with the holistic worldview of Chinese philosophy. According to the Buddhist interpretation, the mind of the sentient beings and the Buddhas are in mutual connection, therefore Buddhas perceive prayers addressed to them and respond to these accordingly. Gazetteers about Putosham from the late imperial era showed that the concept of Kanying held, held 
Confucian literati accept the existence of apparitions by giving it a rational explanation based on Chinese nature philosophy. According to the interpretation of these texts, while bodhisattvas are able to manifest anywhere, the actual place of worship serves as an assisting tool for believers to call forth these apparitions. In the end, it depends on the state of mind whether someone sees it as a land of the Bodhisattva or as an ordinary mountain. Indigenous beliefs had an impact on not only the depictions of the Bodhisattva, but also on the image of Putoshan. It was believed that several Taoist saints lived on or near Putoshan, including the Han Dynasty official Meifu, the Taoist scholar Ge Hong, or the Qin Dynasty immortal An Sheng, who is usually believed to have lived on Mount Penglai. This shows that the image of Putoshan was influenced by that of Taoist utopias, which might have played a role in his designation as the worldly abode of Avalokiteshvara. The most famous sacred site of Avalokiteshvara in Korea is Naksan Temple, built on the eastern coast of the peninsula. Here are a few photos of Naksan Temple. The founding of the temple is attributed to the Shilla monk Isang, who studied with the second patriarch of Hawaiian Buddhism, Jian, in the 7th century. The most well-known version of the founding legend of the temple can be found in the memorabilia of the Three Kingdoms, compiled in the 13th century. In this story, after Master Isang had returned from China, he heard that Avalokiteshvara died in a cave on the seashore of present Yangyang County. He had practiced for seven days before Dharma-protecting beings like Nagas and Devas led him into the cave where he received a crystal rosary from the sky as well as a wish-fulfilling jewel from the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea. Then he needed another seven days of practice before he was able to see the true form of the Bodhisattva. The Bodhisattva instructed him to build a temple on top of the mountain and this temple is present-day Naksansa. Although the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea can be interpreted as an attempt to incorporate an indigenous sea deity into the Buddhist religious system, Naksansa in the early times seems to be less connected to maritime religion than Putosha. Naksansa on the east coast of Korea was not located on an important maritime road, since the exchange of trade and diplomatic missions took place through the East China Sea and the Yellow Sea. The dragon here seems to be more connected to the state-protecting state role of the temple that was built near the northern border of Shilla. The dragon can be a symbol of King Mumu, who was a supporter of the monk in real life and is believed to have turned into a dragon after his death. In the time of compiling the memorabilia of the Three Kingdoms, the Koryo dynasty, just like Shilla in the Three Kingdoms era, had to face external menace. By depicting Korea as the dwelling place of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, as well as a land under the protection of dragons, the text could arise national feelings and provide an ideological basis for national defense. Religious practice is emphasized in the founding legend of Naksansa, and we can get a glimpse of this practice through the vow made at the white flower Bodhimanda. Isang is thought to have composed the text while he was practicing in the cave of Naksan, although the authorship is heavily debated by scholars. The practice outlined in this vow aims at becoming one with Avalokiteshvara through contemplation, converting and edifying sentient beings, and being reborn in the white flower Bodhimanda, the Buddha land of Avalokiteshvara. In this case, Potalaka is not only the residence of a Bodhisattva, but a realm anyone can enter through becoming a Bodhisattva by means of spiritual practice. This concept is in accord with the philosophy of Huaum based on the non-duality of realm, the realm of sentient beings and Buddhas. The cult of Nakstansa thus reflects the teaching of the flower ornament scripture instead of the Lotus Sutra, which on the other hand was influential in the cult of Puto-san. 
the most important site linked to Potalaka in Japan is Nachi of the Kumano region in the southern part of the Key Peninsula. The Kumano Nachi shrine constitutes one interconnecting religious complex with two adjacent temples, Nachidara and Fudaraku Sanji, worshipping two forms of Avalokiteshvara. Originally, Izanagi and Izanami, the divine couple creating the Japanese archipelago, along with the god of the Nachi waterfall, were worshipped in the shrine, but due to the amalgamation of Buddhism with the indigenous religion Shinto, it started to be viewed as the pure land of Avalokiteshvara. The Nachi region is famous for Fudaraku Tokai, or crossing the sea to Potalaka. Practitioners sailed out to sea from the shores of Nachi in a boat sealed tightly like the coffin with only a month's amount of food to reach Potalaka. It is worth noting that people in Japan, unlike people in China and Korea, didn't believe that Potalaka was located at the geographical site of Nachi, but thought that it was located at an undefined place that could be reached from the shores of Nachi. Another characteristic of the practice is that the image of this world and the other world often merge in text about Fudaraku. While Fudaraku was originally believed to be a place which is in connection with this world and where one can go in this present life, Jesuit missionaries from the 16th century witnessed that practitioners deliberately opened a hole in the bottom of the ship or jumped into the water with a rock tied to their body. The practice can be linked to the 23rd chapter in the Lotus Sutra named the past deeds of Bodhisattva the Bodhisattva, where the Bodhisattva burns himself. This shows that unlike Naksan in Korea, which was influenced by the flower ornament scripture, Nachi, like Manputo, was linked to the teaching of the Lotus Sutra. This picture, the Nachi pilgrimage mandala, depicts the buildings and the surroundings of uh, the Kumano Nachi uh, shrine temple complex and at the bottom of the uh, picture we can see the practice of Fudaraku Tokai when a ship is just leaving uh, the shores of Nachi. Kumano region was the Shugendo center, supervised by the Tendai lineage, which based its teachings on the Lotus Sutra while incorporating many elements from esoteric Buddhism as well. An important characteristic of Shugendo practice was the, um, was the mentalization of mountains, that is, identification of geographical places with, with mythical mountains. By uh, this, the word symbolically became the land of gods or Buddhas. By going on pilgrimages in the mountain, Shugendo practitioners could enter the Buddha's realm in their physical body, which gave them the opportunity to become a Buddha in this life. The reason why the image of Fudoraku merged with that of death can be attributed to the influence of indigenous Japanese religion and Taoism. It was believed that the Japanese underworld Tokoyo no Kuni lies beyond the sea near Kumano because according to the Japanese chronicles, Izanami, the goddess creating the Japanese archipelago, was buried there in a cave facing the sea. The belief in the underworld beyond the sea can be linked to ancient burial rituals as well. According to the custom, the body was placed in a seaside cave or was sent out to sea in a boat. The image of Tokoyo no Kuni also merged with the image of Mount Penglai and that of the Dragon Palace, which reflected in the beliefs about Potalaka as well. Mount Penglai was believed to be the dwelling place of immortals, which resembled the image of Potalaka as the place of rebirth. The Dragon Palace also appears in various narratives as a place from where magical gifts and treasures can be obtained. This motif can be linked to the beliefs about Nagas in Hindu mythology and was adapted in Buddhist narratives as well. We can find this motif in the story of Visang, receiving a jewel from the Dragon King of the East Sea. Indigenous dragon worship was also integrated in the cult of Nachi. According to the Kumano Sanyaki, the topography of Nachi resembles a dragon quelled by the power of Buddhism. Certain peaks in the mountain are associated with the body parts of the dragon, among which the head and the tail were pacified by two forms of Avalokiteshvara. This can be viewed as an attempt to integrate a local nature 
deity into the Buddhist cult of Nachi. The narrative follows the pattern of stories about tamed and converted Nagas, a motif that can be traced back to Indian Buddhist narratives but is frequently found in East Asia as well. I prepared a summary of my conclusions, but I would like to wrap up my presentation with my final thoughts about Potalaka beliefs. The domestication of Potalaka acts as an interesting example of Buddhist world making. While it was backed by Buddhist ideas like the non duality of samsara and nirvana, or the thought of mutual interrelatedness in Hawaiian Buddhism, it also incorporated Chinese philosophical concepts like correlative resonance. Moreover, in the indigenous lore played a similarly important role in the process. Places associated with Potalaka were interreligious cross-cultural spaces where the Buddhist realm met with not only the natural geographical space but also the spiritual, mythical space of the region. Here are some of my references. And I would like to thank you for your attention today and please feel free free to ask any questions about my presentation.